separate però da fiumi giganteschi. Quale credito si può dare a questa teoria apparentemente inverosimile? I've just discovered another TV program about Earth expansion. The program was shown on Italian TV. Italian scientists have been considering the concept of expansion for many years. Carey's book was translated into Italian in 1986 and the latest Expanding Earth Symposium was held in Italy in 2011. This was a multinational event attended by scientists from all around the globe and selected papers were later published in a book. So it's very interesting to see how the Italian media is reporting the theory of Earth expansion. Anyway, here's my best translation of the program. If you have any better translations, please list them in the comments. The program starts. We all know about the geological theory of the drift of continents, forcing them to move away from each other by creating fractures and earthquakes. But this theory could be challenged by a new one. A remarkable hypothesis exists. Some researchers claim that the entire planet is expanding so it increases in volume. In the distance past our planet could have been a third of its current size, with a greater cluster of land separated only by gigantic rivers and oceans. Any credit be given to these apparently far-fetched theories? Let's try to find out some more information. The current theory of science is that the universe is constantly expanding today. One revolutionary theory that could completely change our view of the universe is a study of the development of celestial bodies like our own planet. Some researchers advance the hypothesis that the Earth is currently growing. This amazing theory is based on the same one that gave us the theory of continental drift. However, in this case, the current continental crust would form all the separate parts of one supercontinent. It constituted the whole Earth's crust, which was only separated by gigantic rivers and shallow seas. What were the original dimensions of our planet? According to expansion, the Earth would have been less than one-third its present diameter. Studies were starting at the beginning of the 20th century with the German geophysicist Ott Christoph Hildenberg. The concept was more widely promoted in 1976 due to the research of the Australian geologist Samuel Warren Carey. When we examine the development of a tectonic plates, it is only in the last 200 million years that this process dominates. We see someone like the great Professor Carey postulating that this was due to expansion. Here is the expanding globe as it should be 200 million years ago. The celestial globe would have been a lot larger according to conventional plate tectonic theories. The idea at first received attention from the scientific community, but then it was put aside to make room for the more conventional continental drift theory. But in 1991, a world geological map was published showing the age of the ocean floor. The colours indicate the ages of the ocean floor from the violet of the most recent to the green of the most ancient. This would demonstrate 
how the width would be constantly increasing starting from the center of the ocean floor. For expanding Earth theorists, this is the most obvious proof that our planet has increased in volume over geological eras. But this phenomenon is also known by supporters of the drift of the continents, who believe that the new land which emerges is constantly being devoured by the Earth. In this way, the size of the planet will not increase. However, the geologist James Maxlow has reconstructed what the ancient Earth would look like by eliminating the ocean portions that do not exist in a given period. Going back in geological time illustrates how the oceans would have been smaller and smaller. Antarctica would have been found at the equator, a fact demonstrated by the various fossils that confirm the ancient presence of vegetation at the South Pole. In general, the result is amazing. The outlines of all the continents match each other with an accuracy better than 99%. Finally, for expansion, there is other evidence in favour of the theory. The distribution of the same types of flora. Compressional belts follow an overall location. So without expansion, we cannot explain how the mountain ranges are formed or how the ocean bottoms are formed. However, despite all this evidence indicating expansion, a good part of the scientific community still does not consider this a valid theory. All this were true because the planet expands and grows most expansionists are convinced that the volume of the Earth, as well as many other celestial bodies, is continuous due to the increasing internal pressure which would then cause it to swell like a balloon. This would cause fractures in the crust. Volcanic eruptions would then have contributed to the remarkable formation of the water necessary for life. Because it was a smaller planet, it would have a smaller force of gravity. If this were true, one of the greatest mysteries would also find a solution, the secret of the gigantic dinosaurs. For many scientists, the size of dinosaurs' bones was not sufficient to support the weight of animals of that size, unless the Earth's gravity was less. The mechanical support is basically the heart of the problem. Today's animals have the same problems we see in the big dinosaurs. Regardless of the position of the body, the weight is shared between the front and rear limbs. If we imagine this part of the body as a supporting structure, similar to a bridge, it becomes easier to understand how it is accomplished. Gigantic robust columns are needed for the lower legs and a proper skeletal structure is needed to allow these animals to support their own weight. However, there remain many problems from a biological point of view, for example. So it remains difficult to understand how these animals lived. Take Brachiosaurus, for example. This dinosaur's heart was able to pump blood to a head that was 10 meters off the ground. 
Other social interactions, such as mating, also remain difficult to understand from a biological point of view. The large dimensions of these animals have repercussions for all life. Recent studies on fossils fills in our knowledge of the Earth prior to the evolution of the dinosaurs. A fossil of great historical value comes from the Devonian of New York. These corals seem to indicate a year in which the number of days were greater than today's. Instead of 365 days, there were more than 450. These corals testify to a very important fact. A greater number of days per year would correspond to a planet of smaller dimensions in the past, implying that the Earth has increased its size. One big problem that remains to be resolved is what could increase mass. In the 30s, Ott Christoph Hildenberg held the view that new matter was being generated in the core of every celestial body, but this point was not openly debated in the scientific community. No, most believe the Earth is not expanding. They suggest that space is expanding, but there is no thought about the Earth. The great family of stars in the galaxies are not expanding. They are held together by the strength of gravity, and the stars are held together by the force of gravity. The planets, including the Earth, are bodies all held together by the strength of gravity. New studies have proposed a variation of the theory of expanding Earth, proposing after a phase of increase there would also be a phase of compression. Between Australia and the Indian Peninsula, in the Australian Basin, we have found one 2,200 kilometer long mountain range, which clearly indicates that the bottom of the oceans have structures just like the continents. That is, there are chains of mountains. It may be a difficult theory to judge, especially since thousands of jobs are dependent on what we think we know about the Earth. But knowing the Earth and its rhythms of changes makes it appear like a living entity. Not only the Earth, but even gravity may vary over time. This could provide answers to questions that go well beyond the formation of our planet. It may even answer some of the grander puzzles that we have tried to solve for centuries.